The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You've always got time for short time. Hey, it's Warren Lopez. David Taylor. Fred Metcalf. Johnny Hendricks. Tony Ramos. Bubba J. Mike Gold. Matthew Modine. The one and only Chael Sonnen. And you are listening to the one and only Short Time Wrestling Podcast by the often imitated and never duplicated Jason Bryant. All right, well, after our Greco Marathon, Richard and I are continuing on with this one sitting for us. This may or may not be a second or third episode of the Short Time Bonus Points World Championship Preview Conglomerate here on the Matt Talk Podcast Network. If you're just deciding to jump in, my name is Jason Bryant, but if you're not, uh, yeah, you knew it was me the whole time. Richard Immel over there from Colorado Springs. Now we talk women's wrestling. Hey, guys. Just figured I'd get in there. August quick. Go ahead. Twenty third. We kick action. August twenty third. Yeah. Richard, what do you got here? I got fifty five kilos coming your way. And I have a number one ranked wrestler. Odenayu Adekaroye. The Dancing Queen. She is great from Nigeria. She's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um and she's she's sort of the the girl here at 55 kilos to beat. Um, I mean, I'll run through the seeds real quick. Um, you got Anchar of Belarus is the one. Mukaida of Japan is the two. Oleg Nova of Russia is the three. And Abdel Ladina, Kazakhstan is the four. But we have some uh, there some are vacancies. some changes. Yes, but hold the phone. So let's see, Belarus. The number one seed is in play. Mukaida, I know, is down a weight, right? She's down at 53. Um, yeah, she's, she's, she's a BA, dude. She, Mukaida. Yeah. We'll talk yeah, about she, Mukaida later. She's a, she's, she's yeah. a beast. She's wicked. So I'm Mukaida's say, out of the a, seating. She's a badass. We'll talk about that later. She is, yes. Um, Oleg Nova, I believe, is changing weight classes as well. Uh, she'd go down as well. No, she's just not in here. So Oleg Nova... Not in the field. And um let's see, Kazakhstan not in the field. So basically the number one seed is it. So seeding is in, is null and void in this weight class. Um uh, but let let's run through it. Who we got? We got some medalists in here, I see. Yeah, we got a couple. Tetiana Kit, you've already mentioned a Decaroye and uh Natalia Shinishin from Azerbaijan by way of Ukraine. So uh this is this is Again, in this case, what used to be an Olympic weight class is not anymore, which is probably why we've seen Helen go from 53 to 58. We'll talk about her when we get to 58. But the the funny thing is, is you mentioned Adeka Royer, who her breakout performance, Las Vegas, where she's out there dancing. She is so, I mean, she's a twig. I mean, from a build situation, you look at her and be like, she's, she's all arms and legs. She's a string bean, and she wins. And Adeline Gray was telling me about when she was on her team at the uh, the Pro Wrestling League in India. You, you know, she didn't know if this was an act or something. She'd be walking by her hotel room door. She's got the door open, sitting there, headphones on, singing and dancing right in the mirror. Like, no, that's who she is. And if you want a personality that really represents the growth of African wrestling and wrestling on the, the entire continent, not men and women, it's a decoroye because she's just really a breath of fresh air. Uh, Mara Omri won the first medal for uh, for the African countries in, in women's wrestling at the Olympics last year. We'll talk about her when we get to, to that weight class. But you want to talk about a fan favorite if you're not from the United States. It's this girl from Nigeria, and uh, she's a treat, man. And she's 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 pretty good, Richard. She's pretty good. She's really good. It's contagious. You know, I just remember in... In Las Vegas, when we first saw her, the crowd got behind her. You know, she she was walking out to the mat, dancing, singing. She was singing as she's coming off the mat. You know, she wins the medal. It was it was incredible. And yes, she kind of got a uh, uh, how do we say that? She got a bad draw at the Olympics last year. She, she oh, you draw Matson right off the bat, and I'm yeah. like, well, are you kidding me? 
world well, she champ. she had Matson first, then Matt. She loses to Matson, then of course it's Matson Marulis in the semifinals. So, uh, you know, we all knew going in, one of those three is not meddling. Yeah. You know, even though they were all considered, you know, medal, or they had all won medals in the previous year, and they're all medal favorites uh, in Rio. So, um, that's kind of how it shakes out. But um, you know, I'm excited to see her back and and really come out and strong. Uh, you know, after her performance in Rio and. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, where do you go from her? Um, I, you know what? I just want to think in advance. Like, if she wins it, what that has the potential to do for the sport of wrestling globally. I mean, uh, Daniel Legali is the new, uh, has been the Wrestling Federation president for Nigeria. There's all sorts of funding issues. And if you look at the Matt Talk Online newsletter, you see a lot of stories from Nigeria. Uh, you know, a couple times a month about the the funding and whether or not they're going to be able to take athletes to to qualify for the world championships or to host the African championships. But the the this woman has the opportunity to bring an entire nation's wrestling culture and put it on her back, and if for nothing else, to see the growth of wrestling in Africa and in Nigeria, it, it's almost to the point where, like, yes, you. You win because there is there are much more important things her winning can do for the sport of wrestling. So, uh, you know, we, we're, we're going to talk about other people here in a minute, but I think there's so much on this young woman's shoulders at 23 years old that it, it, there, there is a country's wrestling future that hangs in the balance with her performance. No pressure. Well, and I don't think she feels pressure. She, she's got that personality, right? She's... She's just loving what she's doing. Um, I don't know. What, I, I mean, I think we clearly need to talk about Japan. They're going to be a central theme throughout. They're sending. It, it won't be a, you know, someone we've seen before uh, on the senior level. It looks like they have. Uh, you know, my presumption would be Okuno would be the the girl. You know, she she's a cadet world champ, cadet world bronze, um, young. But no matter who they send, we know they're going to be tough and talented. Richard, um, she was born in yes. 1999, dude. Yes. Yes, that makes me feel old. Yeah, I'm not even talking about that. but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's impressed. I mean, the, anyone they send out, they, they just got that pipeline. You know, they're, they, they've got it rolling. Oh, just wait till clearly. you get to these other weight classes. We, oh, my goodness. Uh, we're, there's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of Japanese discussion here. Bill May is going to get quite a few shout-outs as he's the... Uh, the Japanese American uh, member of our media team. Uh, other names to to kind of look at at this weight class again. Fifty five is is Dudova again from Bulgaria, European champion. Uh, Katarina Hanchara Janoskevich. Yep, said that from Belarus. Uh, Matilda Riviere from France, and uh, Kolesnik is not entered for Azerbaijan as that is Natalia Shinishin. So uh, the Europeans going to have a good good tournament here. But again, this is I, I I got a hunch that this is going to be a Decaroye and a Kuno in the finals. I'm yes, I'm saying the Cadet World Champ is a heavy is, is a heavy finalist favorite here. Um, United States Becca Leathers, Junior World Bronze Medalist, going to be a dangerous draw. As is our friend from uh, north of the border. We can't not mention Michelle Fazari from Canada, veteran, been around a while, Olympian, has the propensity to knock off anybody. Just uh, with that 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 tenacious veteran savvy, so to speak. Well, and with her, um, she won Pan Am's up weight, I believe. So she's coming down to this weight class. So she'll be big for the weight. Um, Leathers was the Pan Am champ. <laughs> that's that's the only time you can say that about a woman and it not be offensive is in the sport of wrestling. So, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about it. Well, Way to bring that up. You know, I'm, mar- um, I'm married, so I have to watch what I say. I, I feel bad. That now. may have come off offensive, uh, so I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, uh, who cares? <laughs> As I was saying, Leathers, <laughs> Love Leathers Richard. is the Pan Am champ. You know what? With Leathers, I was looking through her results this year, and she has sneakily put together a great year. I think she's won gold medals at three international events. She hasn't lost this year internationally at any level. She has not lost. Uh, she won the Pan Ams. Um, I forget the others. Maybe Clip On and and one other, but. She's tough, you know, and she's got the international experience. You mentioned the Junior World Bronze. Um, I really like her outlook, you know, and we'll talk about this, the women's team for the U S a pretty young team, you know? Um, yeah, got some first timers here. Uh, Becca, actually, I, what I'm curious on 
with her performance is how last year in Rio is actually going to benefit her. And when I say that, she was a training partner. So she was there the entire time. Uh, granted, she did actually get to have a little bit more fun than some of the Olympians did. Matter of fact, the night that her eye and Salada crashed, Ryan Seacrest notwithstanding. But that gets brought up every show. Every show, because it's sh- that it was that great of a time. I was you were talking about your Finnish belt earlier. If if it's the same episode, yeah. If it was another episode, it was the Greco episode. Yeah, I was wearing Brazilian jorts from a place called Taco. Okay. Let's let's talk about Brazilian jorts for a second. No, but Becca's experience at the Olympics as a training partner, and we've seen that, especially, you know, when, when those athletes finally make their first world team, is that experience is they, they look at that and they're like, that is something you can't put a price tag on. It's like that was so beneficial to them. So I think if there's a breakout time for somebody in the United States, Becca Leathers as a training partner last year at the Olympics, breaking through on her first senior world team. Uh, the cards are kind of in her favor, and there's it's not that deep of a weight where she's going to have to go through a true minefield. So, uh, you know, this is this is a good situation for Becca. And by the way, right, I can't right. I, I got to say this: I'm an Indian outlaw, half Cherokee, and she's from Choctaw. Choctaw had to throw that in there. Yeah, right down the street from where I grew up. Actually, of course, you're an Oklahoma uh, Homer. Of course, I am. Yeah, Becca's up to number nine in the world rankings. So that's I, I, that kind of caught me off guard too. But uh, Spanish Grand Prix number one, she won that. Make uh, you feel old. Month. I mean, I want to I want to get some Richard Immel. What the heck here. was that? What was what? Did you hear that? Sorry, go ahead. Chris Moen drinking another Mountain Dew. No, there was a loud. I don't know. Go ahead. I would say that's an edit point where we're just going to leave it in. My yeah, point. I'm my not, question I'm... for you is: growing up in Oklahoma. And being yeah. uh, somewhat older than Miss Leathers, what do you remember uh-huh. about her coming through? And now that you've seen, now she's on a world team. I mean, I'm curious on your insight here. Uh, she was kind of, she was too young for when I was there. Um, I didn't really know about her until I, after I got got here. But I will say, women's wrestling, um, we did have. We did have some tough women's wrestlers in Oklahoma. There's not a lot of women's wrestlers, but the ones that do wrestle and stick it out through high school, they're tough. They're tough. Um, so I think we had we had two women whenever I was coming through that uh, actually placed at the state tournament in Oklahoma. So so let me see if I, I mean, can guess. Was, Joey Miller. Joey Miller. Yeah. And I'm trying. I don't know if I can. Let's see. Yeah. Gonna gonna drop. She wrestled. Uh, Hannah Martin. Oh, I think okay. Was her name. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Those are names um, that are familiar. Of course, Joey. Yeah. Everybody knows. Everybody knew Joey with Russell Girl and all that. She was one of the like when she was like eight years old. She had a website. Anyway, back on, back on target here. What's our next yes. weight? Yes. Yes. Uh, moving up to fifty-eight kilos. Fifty-eight kilos. Your top seed, Valeria Koblova of Russia, your Olympic uh, silver medalist, dang near beat Icho last year. Um. She's the number one seed. Then you got Tyna Bekoff of Kyrgyzstan is two. Icho's a three. And she's not wrestling. And then, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Marwa Amri of Tunisia is the four seed. Which means uh, so Helen unseated. Correct. Up correct. two weights. Helen, up two weights, unseated. Um, but, but just looking at the seeds real quick. Uh, it looks like uh, only two of them are, are actually seated. So Koblova and, and Omri will be separated, but the other ones will, will just be drawn in. Um, what do you think about this weight class? I mean, I, I think probably a little more depth than what we what we saw, even though you're losing uh, you're losing Icho, which is you know clearly a big hit to the depth. But you've got some Olympic medalists in here, and, and Marulis, Olympic champ, clearly. So... It's going to be a great weight class to watch, if you ask me. Is it? Isn't it nice from an American standpoint to be like, yeah, the American uh, Helen Marul's the Olympic champ. We finally get to say that, right? We finally get to say that. I mean, with with you know, with all due respect, uh, you know, because you can say anything you want after saying with all due respect. But I mean, correct? Yeah, call a blova, all a blova. As you've got to mention the whole married name, which is just a nightmare. She's only twenty four years old. That's what's crazy to me is. Uh, you know, Koblova is she's good and she's been good. 
I mean, world silver 14, Olympic silver 16, you know, at, at a more comfortable weight. I'm just curious on, on the strength that Helen's going to have to deal with here because we saw when she went up three weights at Clippin when she came back and uh, that didn't go terribly well for her, but you know, back at 58, I'm curious. I mean, I think in the back of our mind, we were all kind of hoping that Icho would be wrestling. So does, does Helen right. go through Yoshida and Icho? I mean, part of us all wanted to see that, right? I definitely wanted to see that. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Eventually. Uh, considering eventually. Yeah, eventually. But this year, Icho's out. Yoshida's out. They got a whole new crop of girls from Japan coming in. Um, but, I mean, looking at it, Helen, I think Helen and uh, and Koblova are probably your two that are that you're looking at. Like, ah, collision course, that's probably what you are what you're, would predict for the final. Um, but uh, Marla you know, Omri Am- has been ranked number one in the world, and she's won. I mean, <laughs> right. okay, the African Championship's not super deep. We just talked about how how much Adeka Royer would do for the African continent. Well, Omri won the first medal at the Olympics for Africa in women's wrestling. She's won ten straight African championships. So, uh, Olympic bronze, three time Olympian, you know, junior world bronze medal. She's been good and has been good and will continue to be good. She's only 28. Koblova, you know, got that credentials as well. There is a name we saw her at juniors, Grace Bullen from Norway. Disappointing juniors. We always kind of expect more from her because she won three junior European championships. She was a cadet world championship, never got that junior world championship. Brett was 13th at the seniors when she was like 18 years old. This kid has just tremendous stuff. The question is not is, is whether she can put together a good tournament because, you know, the, the the athlete she lost at the Junior World Championships in the semifinals to a wrestler she pinned in the European Championships. So, I, you know, which Grace Bullen shows up can really complicate this weight class. And and I see Lutani Bikova from, uh, from Kyrgyzstan, you know, two-time Olympian, got a Junior World Bronze back in 13. This is uh, this is going to be a she's she's coming into her own as well at twenty four. So, yeah, I want to circle back on Grace Bullen because I actually had the chance to talk to her. Darn good story, uh, Remy, uh, Mister Mister Rimmel there too. Yeah, thank you. At the so at the Junior Worlds, I interviewed her for about twenty minutes, and uh, incredible story. Um, you know, she was uh, she was in Africa, and then you know. A war refugee made her way to Norway. I mean, it was just incredible story. Um, you know, used wrestling as a as a essentially it was daycare at first, is what she was saying. Dad just put her in in wrestling because he didn't have anywhere else to put her. So he, she would stay at the wrestling uh, gym for five six hours a day, even though they only practiced for an hour when she was young. <laughs> so it was uh, it's just stuff like that. You know, um, Brandon Paulson's yeah, I, clubs about. 10 minutes from my house. Are you saying <laughs> I can save on child? Hmm. All right. Go. Paulson, guess what? Lucy and Ruby are joining Pinnacle tomorrow. Yeah. Daddy can go uh, play Bullen, golf. I like Bullen. She's, she was a European champion this year, even though she's still a junior. So she's, uh, and she's got big move potential. Oh, when I was watching her. Amazing. Her inside trip is, yes. is, is the, I mean, it's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, you got a you got a high upside there with her. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's really I think the, the the ones to watch here at this weight class, to be quite honest. Right. I mean, and you got to think Japan's throwing someone out there, but they they don't Not have the anyone credential, really credentialed. Though. This is this, is, this right. is, Everybody's run from Icho for so long, so who's going to be ready? I mean, they're like, okay, Kauri, you retire yet? Yeah. Okay, good. We can move. Should up we or mention? Move down? Uh, Bats at Seg? Did you mention her? Ah, Mongolia. Oh. There you okay, go. Okay, I'm going to need some. I, this will not, be the first the right time. One. It is Bats at Seg, Altan Seg, Junior World Champion nice. 2014, Cadet World Silver in 11. Yeah, she's going to be good. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Helen Marulis, Olympic champ. Take it to the bank. Um, moving on up. Hey, Jason. What way are we mind. moving to now? Uh, 63 ah, kilos. 63. Whoa, okay. All I see is bolded, bolded, bolded text. At 63 kilos? What'd you do? Well, I'm just looking at the the gnarliness that is this weight class. Taibe Usain. 
Jackie Renteria Castillo, Valerie Ladzinskaya, Hannah Johansson, Yulia Ostapchuk. Yeah, this is pretty good. And first timer Mallory Velti. So this one could be fun. This could be fun. Let me list your seeds first. Um, Monica Mihalik. Uh, Poland is the top seed. Not entered. On it. Yeah, not entered. Um, who does Russia have? Who's Russia thrown out there? Yeah. No, Lazen, so, Lazenskaya. Right. So Trezakova is not uh, entered. Yulia Koch. she in there? Yep. Koch or Stopchuk. Oh, she, she got married. Yeah, and and it's I wish she'd go by Ostopchuk because it's a lot easier to say than Tkach. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. it's like a soft J. I think it's pronounced yogging. Soft J. Yeah, and then uh, the four seed is uh, Olympic champ Risako Kawai, but she's not at this weight class. So uh, Koch is the uh, the only seeded wrestler, and she's uh, you know world uh, world bronze and. You know what, junior world champ. So she's, I mean, she's solid. She's solid. Um, I don't know. Where do we even begin with this? One, uh, man? Japan. When, when in Japan. doubt, start with Japan. <laughs> so you would think uh, Ayana Gempi would be the girl. Yeah, Gempe, right? world champion in, again, mm-hmm. non Olympic world champion 2016, 21 years old, was the Asian silver medalist. So you're going to have to look and be like, okay, well, who beat her? You know, that's, one of those things that like Japan shows up the world championships. I'd, I'd say she's won the circle. Uh, Taiba Usain had a really bad Olympic games, but this, I mean, she's a scrappy, scrappy individual. I mean, you look at her, it's going to be a fight. And then may, maybe is it finally time for, for Braxton stone Papadopoulos from Canada to finally break through? Uh, you know, she missed out on the Olympic team, losing at a, at a really tough weight last year up in Can- or last year up in Canada. And, uh, you know, she's she's somebody that's been around for a while, ready to finally break through. I think there's a breakout performance here waiting to be had. The question is, who's it going to be? I I like your Braxton pick. Um, you know, she's she's one of these girls. She's that's been very fiery, impressive. man. She's fire. She's yeah. piss and vinegar, for lack of a better term. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to agree with you. She's she's definitely one to watch. I think uh, Renteria. I don't know. I don't know how long she keeps it up. Yeah, you know, and she's up the... a weight too. I mean, disappointing seventh at the Pan Ams. I mean, you look at her Olympic bronze medals, oh eight and twelve. She didn't medal last year. Getting, you know, thirty one years old. She she was very, very good in her day. I think up a weight is is gonna take its toll with a little bit of age. I mean, she's she's crafty, technically very, very funky. She's got a real good crotchless series and countering takedowns. So uh, she might be able to outslick some of these younger kids, but I, I think it's eventually going to catch up with her. So uh, credentials are impressive, but I think the, her best years might be behind her. Yeah, no, I forgot to mention uh, Orkorn uh, Puridorj of uh, Mongolia, but Evdorj, who actually, I'm going to correct you on all these because I, I my my friend Mogi Batar and my friend uh, Pure of Dork. What you said, Pure of Dork, right? Pure of Dork. The J is like a ch. Pure of Dorch, okay. Pure of Dorch. So, Pure of Dorch, she's uh, the last girl to beat Icho, if I'm not mistaken, right? At the uh, Evan Uregan. Was it her or was it another it. Uri? Was it another Mongolia? Because they're they've got Mongolia's got a lot of depth. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was her uh, that that beat Icho. Well, I'll I'll do a quick search for Uregan real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, test my see. memory out. Test my memory. Uh, test. That would have been Orkan Pure of Dorch. You. Are correct, sir. Ah, boom! Okay. Got a gold star for me. Where was that impression coming from? I I wasn't. You are correct, that, so. sir. Ha <laughs> ha. No, let's talk about Mallory Velty. I was gonna. Bit. It's by the way, it was Phil Hartman playing Ed McMahon during Saturday Night Live when Dana Carvey was playing Johnny Carson. Continue Beautiful. about Mallory. Mallory Velty. Um, another one of the girls, first time world team member. I think we have five, five women who have made a world team for the first time. So young team, but uh, Velty, she is, she is nails. Um, you know, Russell's up at Simon Fraser in Canada. Sorry, she, she, Canuck she gets, you can't claim her. <laughs> yeah. Can't claim her. So she goes back and forth. She trains with a lot of the tough, uh, you know, women from Canada. I think she was just up there training with, um, uh, 
Well, Why is her name slipping me? Well, she Heavyweight. was Daniel Lapage's uh, training partner at the Olympics, too. Right, right, right. Distasio. She was up there training with Distasio recently. and um, Yeah, so she's she's got quite a bit of talent. She's been on a junior world team before. Uh, you know, and and she beat, she obviously beat out Maya Nelson, who was a junior world champ, you know, uh, last week. So she she's got a lot of upside. I like I like Velty. I like where she's at. She's strong. She's tough. That's I think that's the biggest thing about her. She's just tough. She's gritty. She goes out there and just uh, attacks. Good transitions off the shots to the lace. So um, I, I like what we see out of Velty. Um, you know, I think she had a little bit of a uh, subpar Pan Am championships, but maybe that was that was some of the experience that she needed to to be successful here. So uh, keep an eye out on Velty, um, and that's. I will wrap up 63 kilos. Actually. Yeah, I really don't have anything other to add other than uh, Ayana Genpei from, from Japan. You know, world champion, non-Olympic weight coming up. Let's let's figure this one out. So our, our final weight of August 23rd, which is scary because now we're, we're only on our third day of wrestling, and we've got this much, th- this, this many knowledge bombs for you. <laughs> 75 kilos. Uh Seeds are as such. Yasmin Adar of Turkey is the one seed. Vasilya Marzeliuk of Belarus is the two seed. Erica Weeb is the three seed. And um, Zanet Nimeth of Hungary is the four seed. Now we know Weeb is out. She's the Olympic champ, but she's not wrestling. It will be Distasio, um, who was actually the highest ranked wrestler according to the world rankings in the field. Um, now, how are the how are the other ones? Yeah, Marza looks in, and uh, Adar's in. Yeah, Adar's in. So and uh, Nemeth is and in. is in. So yeah. So how this will work is Adar will be on the top side, and Marzeliuk and Nemeth will be separated on the bottom side of the bracket. Not so, sure that, if Nemeth is related to Dolph Ziggler or not. Unconfirmed <laughs> reports. Unconfirmed. Uh, yeah. Well, this weight class. Holy <laughs> cannoli! Cut me off. Jerk face. Sorry. Were you, did you have something else to say? No, I was just you just totally crapped on my Dolph Ziggler reference. Uh, His name is Nick Nemeth, bad. by the way, in case you're wondering. Nick Nemeth, yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, moving forward. So we mentioned uh Marzellia, she's an Olymp- or uh, excuse me, a world bronze. Then you've got uh World Bronze yeah. three times. Yeah, three times. She's really good. Uh and should point out that she beat Adline at the Olympics last year. So you're the one that uh, Alina Falken. So you're you're a jerk. Yeah, I pointed that, that out. <laughs> yeah, so, you work at USA Wrestling, <laughs> and you pointed that out. I mean, it's a fact. What do, what do you want me to say? Uh, Alina Falken, uh, one of my personal favorites. She's a world champ, world bronze. Um, Richard, I, I want to interject a, a little anecdote here, real quick. 2013, please. I had to do the broadcast at the World Championships, and Alini was wrestling. And my broadcast partner for that particular day was Jake Herbert. Now, being the consummate <laughs> like professional that I am, I know how to pronounce this young woman's name and know how to pronounce her name correctly. Mr. Herbert basically reverted to an eighth grade version of Beavis and Butthead <laughs> throughout the course of the broadcast. So for the most part, I was doing that one by myself. So Alini Falken, sorry for Jake four years ago. Yes. Um, There's a lot more to that story, but that's the, that's the PG 13 version. That's what we can say here on bonus point short time. Well, my show, I would uh, say it, your show. I mean, you're, you're NGB. You got you, Gary still in the office at. No, he left. Oh, Gary left. Yeah, Gary left. I'm I'm holding down four. It's almost at Ellis Coleman's birthday, by the way, if in case you're wondering. <laughs> All right, so yeah. continuing so, on. So let's talk about some of these names. Ep May, I think Ep May has been around for for quite some time. Yeah, right? talk to her today actually because I needed to make sure her name was Ep. It's actually Maya. It's like an M umlauts over the A. Maya. Right. So um, yes, I actually met her last year. In Rio, just walking down the street, I saw her and Anastasia Grigorieva from Latvia walking down the street as I was buying luggage because I needed another bag because of all the clothes, like the Brazilian shorts that I bought in Brazil. I needed to get them home. 
and they were having me walking by the luggage store. So I uh, ended up adding her on Facebook, and we were talking today because her name is constantly back and forth in entry lists. It's like Maya Epp or Epp Maya. Well, it's Epp Maya. And anyway, World Bronze Medal is 15, General Bronze is 9. Great person, definitely a metal threat. Yeah. Uh, Alina Da Silva Fiera? World From Silver Brazil? Medalist in, I mean, in Uzbekistan. Right. So she's she's up there. She's got the uh the judo background a little bit, big with the throws, uh, can can strike from anywhere, so you gotta be careful when you wrestle her. Um we mentioned Estacio, uh, you know, and she I think she only competed at one world championship, but she's she's had the success against Weeb and uh, you know, she looks strong. Yeah, and how about um, the 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 two seconds away from beating Adeline at Pan Am's in fifteen? Right. Maybe maybe right. a half was, a second. That was a crazy match. That was really crazy. Um, I don't know. Furuichi or Suzuki? Who are they going to put out here? Mm, well, I would almost have to go with uh, Suzuki has not had the performance. And at 30 years old, yeah, she's she's not had the performance. You look at Fur- Masako Furuichi. Richard, let me read through some credentials here. Yeah. Cadet World go Champion ahead. 2011, 2012. 2013 junior world champion 2014 2015 2016 at 20 years old this young woman has already won six world championships my money is on her to get the spot however not necessarily um a a, i mean she's a metal threat but she was second in the Asian Championships to Polina of China. So good success at the age group levels. How is that going to work at our first senior world championship? So with the depth of this field, right. too. I mean, we've also haven't even mentioned Svetlana Senko, who's a world bronze medalist. Uh, Burma Strova from Ukraine, who is 37 years old. I mean, she was world champion in 2002. Um, was 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 she even born? Yeah, okay. I was gonna say was was Furuyuchi even born then? Yeah, she was six. <laughs> yeah, um, that was what the Bantam World Championship or something. She probably won that too. She definitely won that one. Uh, so the American Victoria Francis, uh, another one of our first timers on the world team. Um, strong, tough. Didn't fare so hot at the the Pan American Championships. I think she went one and three in the in the five woman round robin. So a lot of ground to work to to make up for Victoria. Um, but but you know uh, she's she's wrestled the toughest competition there there is. You know I think her three losses were all to highly ranked wrestlers at the Pan Ams. Um, so you know it, it's just uh, I think we're gonna have to wait and see on Victoria. Um, the the talent is there. Uh, she was the Olympic trials finalist last year to Adeline, um, you know, making her first world team time to make the mark. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what what more to add, add on that. Um, I mean, she does have a junior world medal. So, I mean, it's not yeah. like this is her first international experience. I mean, sometimes just being at a world championship, regardless of age group, will help with maybe that mental ass mental attitude. So, uh, Richard, I'm guessing you've seen that more so. Uh, recently, because uh, when I left in 2012, they they were just starting to get the emphasis back on the junior and cadet world championships. As a matter of fact, the cadet world championships were were you know a year old when I left. So you've probably seen the developmental athletes out there more. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I've got to assume that a junior world the junior world experience is helping every single athlete that's on their senior world team. It, it may not be as daunting a task without that previous experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see that across the board and junior level medals uh, are indicative of senior level success. Did so, I mention the stats? Uh, I mentioned that kind of early in the, the, if this is one show early in the show, if this is the second show early in the Greco show. Yeah. 54 junior world medalists are in the women's tournament, nine Olympic medalists. And these are not in total medals. These are actual individuals and 22 senior medals. So, about 10% of the field has won a senior level world medal and about what 40% has won a junior level world medal. So no, 20%, man, my math sucks. <laughs> hey, uh, Edit I'm gonna, points, I'm gonna podcasting joke. 
All right. So rolling let's 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 roll it back around. We're we're back now at forty eight. August twenty fourth. Yes, August twenty fourth, your seeds are as such. Maria Stadnik of Azerbaijan, who is not competing, is your top seed. Then you have um Yanan Sun of China. Not competing. Yeah, the then you have People's Republic of China, by the way. Correct. I gotta say that because I'm the Iri- PA announcer. I gotta say everything. I have to say Russian Federation every time they step on the mat. So you got Iri Tosaka. Iri Tosaka. Iri Tosaka. <laughs> Not at 48. Yep. Yeah. And um, then we have Patricia Bermudez of Argentina. So she is the only woman in the 48 kilo field to have a seed. Therefore, we can uh, move on from the seeding discussions. Well. Um, 30 years old, bronze medals at Pan Ams, and she's the one seed. So, again, they're working on it. They're working on it. Other right, names that aren't seeded that we should pay attention to, uh, Zhilda Zeshimova from Kazakhstan, uh, Jessica Blaschka from the Netherlands. That's pretty much all we've got at the senior world level. There's plenty of cadet and junior medals here. And I'm just going to go with Yui Sasaki, cadet world champion, 14, 15, 16. She's 18 years old. She's going to be Japan's next big thing. So keep an eye on this young lady, 18 years old, Asian senior champion. Yeah, Skip Jr. is going right to senior. She's pulling a saddle I have. <laughs> yeah, she. Uh, saddle I have didn't win three cadet world championships, though. No, he only won two, right? Yeah, only. Only two. Um, let's see, who are some other ones here? Um, Romania, Emilia Vuk. Vuk, she's, yeah, solid, very solid. She's solid. Um, Bronze medalist. And you senior. got Valeria Chepsarkova of uh, of Russia. She's she's tough. She's gone back and forth with, uh, with Vicky uh, Anthony over the years. You know, and, and Victoria, I think, man, you got you to gotta really like her odds. You know, we can just go into that. Um, yeah, I mean, Victoria's how close? Girl. Budapest, Richard. Budapest. Oh, she was. She was. That was uh, one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever experienced in my career. Watching. Yeah. So Vicky was up eight to one, or she was a point away from getting a tech yeah. in the world semifinals and got headlocked and pinned. Up a weight. Yeah, up At a weight. 51. Right. She was a. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, why you don't tie up with Mongolians ever. <laughs> Vicky knows so, this. With Vic- apologies, Vicky. I'm sorry if you're listening. Yeah, I, I don't want to bring up bad juju, but that was that was just bad. Yeah, we we've learned from that. We're moving on, you know. But but Vicky down at 48, she hasn't been on the team since then. Uh, you know, down at 48, she's been battling Alyssa Lampy at the weight class, and then last year Haley Agello, um, obviously got the Olympic spot. So Vicky. She is she is right there. She's ranked top five. She's you know won or been successful at all the major tournaments that she's competed at. You know it's her time. She's one of the most dynamic talents we have on the entire team, men or women. Inside trip is incredible. How uh, about Vicky going on the inside trip, talking about her inside <laughs> trip? Right. Yeah. You think of, we haven't we mentioned the inside trip before we mentioned blood round. Amazing. <laughs> now we've mentioned them both, so we've got that covered. But Vicky, I mean, looking at this weight class, she can win it. No doubt in my mind, she could win this weight class. A strong medal contender here for the United States. Yeah, one name I want you to keep an eye on. We saw Turka Nasarova at the Junior World Championship. She's coming off a silver medal at the Junior Worlds, like last week. And she won the World Championship two years prior. So at 20 years old, this kid's ready to hit the senior level and, you know, coming off a really solid performance. I mean, does she carry that momentum in? I also think you, you need to keep in India uh, with Vinesh Fogat. And this is one of the sisters that was featured in the, in the, the movie, uh, I believe it was called dangle or dongle or something like that. I, I can't quite uh, remember the pronunciation of said name, but there's the, the sisters that are uh, part of Indian wrestling and uh, Vinesh Fogat is one to keep an eye on. Uh, only 10th at the Olympics and in her previous world championships was only 22nd, but at 22 years old, Asian silver medalist, 
to Sasaki. So I, I, I got to think Vinesh Fogat is a real strong metal threat for India here. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. Shall we move on to 53 kilos? Knowledge bombs, 53. This is a huge weight. Like, this weight yeah, is very, big. Very big it's weight. Like 30 entries um, here. No, it was more than that in there. Well, let's let's look at the seeds here. Um, number one seed, not in it. Number two seeds, Marulis, who's clearly up at at uh, fifty eight. Um, we do have the three seed, Maria Prevolakari. Yep. No, that's not right. I got it. Okay. Yep. And ah, Prevolakari, uh, close enough. Clever Laraki. Yep. Oh, you went. And then Sari is yeah. the fourth. Yeah. So she's the only seed, Prevolakari. Um, World bronze so, in 12, European bronze in 17, Olympian, Greek. But wow, do we have do we have a field here? We've got uh we got world champ. Let's see, world champs. We've got a world champ Kaladinskaya from Belarus, world champ Jesse McDonald from Canada, world champ Mayu Mukaida from Japan. Uh where else are we got? We got World Silver, Davasuk from Mongolia. We got World Champ Malyasheva from Russia. Dirty, dirty, dirty things. Yes. Um. So I was talking to Bill May, and he thinks this uh, that Mukaida is is the next big thing. He's all about Mukaida. Um, world Cadet World Champ in twelve and thirteen. Junior World Champ in sixteen. Senior world champ in 16, not Olympic weight. So she did right. the double last year. Yeah, so watch out for her, clearly. She was born, uh, th- uh, wow, probably my graduation day <laughs> from high school, <laughs> if, if the calendar falls right. Okay, anyway. Well, that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned, gosh, this, this weight Shut class up, is Richard. tough. Sorry. And well, yeah, think about the exodus at this weight class too, with with Yoshida and Marulis leaving this weight class. That's another two that we're and already Sophia not wrestling this year for Sweden. Right, right. This is uh, it's incredible that I don't this even, weight you class can see is an so entry deep for Sweden here. No, I don't either. Mm. Yeah. Deep um, weight. Deep let's weight. talk about Haley Ogello for a minute. Let's do that. By the way, did you check out her interview with Shane Sparks on the path to Paris? From trackwrestling.com? I have not. But, quite uh, good. Quite good. Yeah. Okay. I have to, I'll have to check that I'm going to actually have to she's... mention that. We, we haven't given uh, the Path to Paris much of a push here because there's like, oh, I don't know, 23 shows in the Matt Talk Podcast Network. But Shane Sparks is doing a series of interview, interviews, interviews, interviews with world teamers leading into Paris. So we've had about five or six Kyle Snyder, Jordan Burroughs, Thomas Gilman. Haley Algello, uh, Ben Provisor. So they're out there at mattalkonline.com slash path to Paris. But uh, yeah, Haley gives an interesting insight on how what got her into wrestling and uh, now making her first world team after making an Olympic team down a weight, now at a more um, less abusive weight, I guess, in terms of getting there, is uh, is is the Lockport, Illinois native. Yeah, and, and she... Um... She's she's really good. I mean, she was right there at the Olympics uh, in both of her matches that she and beat she a world medalist on the way too. I mean, Jessica Blaschka, who we mentioned at forty eight, right. that was her first round draw at the Olympics last year. That's a solid win, right? Um, and, and you know, I mean, she's another one of these girls. This is her first world team, technically, even though she's on the Olympic team last year. Cadet world champion. Uh, she has the Olympic experience under her belt. She is tough, strong. Um, focused, energized, focused and energized. Right, and Richard, I want your insight here. Pan Ams, what happened? Pan Ams. Um, Haley did not wrestle at Pan Ams. She weighed in. She didn't. Wrestle. Okay, that's what people say because uh, you see, you go through the research and you you see a ten by her name. You're like, okay, what happened? Right. Yeah. She she weighed in, and then uh, I think she banged up her shoulder or something. Uh, you know, on the warm ups, and then they said, "Yeah, don't worry about it." So, All right. Well, that's the key. Um, Here's the key: Why do you wrestle the Continentals? Is because you have to wrestle. You have to enter the Continentals to be eligible to wrestle at the World Championships. So, hence, 
There's the explanation. Hence why Kyle Rochelle went to the Pan Am. Well, he was the only guy that had a Brazilian visa that was still valid. That that's the point, dude. If that's I could have made seventy four, they'd have entered me. Okay. <laughs> Right, I think they were close to entering me there for a minute. Actually, but uh, c- I mean, could you could you make one sixty three? Not without about a week's lead time, maybe two weeks, maybe like a year. <laughs> lead time. <laughs> you know how I could make one sixty three? Cut off a leg, chainsaw, chainsaw. There you go. Um, all right, my man, we can talk about sixty k. You would like? Let's scroll up to sixty. Uh, in this case, scroll down because I use the the mouse that goes this way. A lot of bolded names here, and when I say bolded names, let me explain this. I am a bit of a a nerd when it comes to spreadsheets and Google Docs, and I don't think anybody that listens to this show or Richard's show is going to dispute that fact. Matter of fact, I have a sh- a, a spreadsheet of how many different shirts I've worn for wrestling shirt today. Hashtag wrestling shirt today. And I also have a spreadsheet of which beers I keep in my fridge called the Speakeasy Beer List. Now, I use a giant Google Doc for the country code, the first name, the last name, the pronunciation, the previous federation, the birth date, the age, the world level credentials, and the continental credentials. That being said, there's a lot of bolded names on this list. And what a bolded name means is you've medaled at the World or Olympic Championships. If you're in in gold, you've got a gold at an age group or university or world military. Same with silver and bronze. Conditional formatting is your friend. We got a lot of bolded names on this list, Richard, at 60 kilos. A lot of bold. Yes, we do. Um, well, let's start with uh, Allie Reagan, who is the number one seed Woo-hoo! in the tournament. Uh, recently going to re- relocate to, uh, she's about to train with the Hawkeye Club. Yeah, Hawkeye Wrestling Club. How about that? Um, you know, yeah, I went to Allie high school is, with Corey Clark's cousin. You've you've mentioned that. Okay. Just mention mm-hmm. that again. <laughs> so Allie was... Uh, That's why I picked him to win the NCAA championships. We haven't right, really put the, right. put the connection together, but we'll just leave that to your imagination. <laughs> World silver medalist last year is Allie. And then she was the, the Pan Am champ this year. Looked phenomenal at the Pan Ams. Um, so... Uh, yeah, she's your number one seed. She's ranked, I believe, third in the world. Um, she's a strong contender here. She's on her, what, fourth world team? So, uh, the, the experience factor is there. It's just, uh, yeah, it's time to get it done, get that, uh, world title for Allie. I mean, she's, if you want to watch for her, she's got a low level. She can hit from anywhere in the field. Um, likes to transition off of that into a turn if she can. Um, and just gritty, she'll come out there and fight. Yeah, I mean, you, you gotta love watching Allie. I mean, she's a, she's a, one of the most exciting women's wrestlers to watch. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's that's where we start. She's your number one seed. Number two seed is Kasimova of Kazakhstan, and she is in the field. Uh, then we have China with Pei, not entered. China, yeah, this will be Sun, not entered. Sun Yat Chen. And in case you're wondering, yep. China, Korea. And Taipei and some Mongolians will go with the last name first in their naming convention. So if you hear, uh, you know, Richard and I back and forth with like uh, Yazen Sun, Sun Yanan, you know, it's last name first in this case. But anyway, continue. Yeah. Well, and then the the number four seed is uh, is Mongolia. Uh, Batcher Baturjov nailed say. it. Yes, nailed uh, so- it, Emil. Congratulations, know, you know. by the way. Thank you. Shout out Allie Reagan, Team Pattaya, 2012. There you go. And anybody that's on that team gets a shout out. <laughs> we are unsure Pattaya, if Julia Pattaya. Salata will be making the trip to sing karaoke with us in Paris, though. Julia's been feisty lately. Um, <laughs> well, that's another podcast entirely. Entirely. So, yes, uh, Reagan's the top seed, Casimova, and... Uh, Badrjav separated on the bottom side, but that doesn't even begin to to, to hit our list here of uh, Olympic champion Risako Kawai. Yeah, yeah. or Let's her at- sister is the entry. Now the joke was that uh, she uh, now the sister Yukako finished ninth 
at the Junior Worlds last week. Apparently, she had to swim back to Japan because <laughs> ninth of the Junior Worlds not acceptable. But Risako, World Silver 15, two-time Junior World Champ, Olympic Champion, won the Asians this year. And while Allie is the one seed, I, I'm going to have to kind of lean to say that Kawhi is probably the favorite here. Yeah, I mean, she, she, yeah. yes, there's no other way to put it. <laughs> of course, she's the favorite. Um, and, uh, you know, she's. That's dynamite insight. You only get on bonus points, short time, short time, short bonus time. Yes, yes, of course. But we can. By the way, it's now Ellis Coleman's birthday. Happy birthday, Ellis. At least in the central time zone. Yes, hopefully you listen to this one as well as the Greco. I think we're going to have to split this thing up because we're approaching an hour. <laughs> yeah, in case you're wondering, we've talked... Uh... Yeah, anyway, we'll talk about that as we start freestyle because that's going to be the mo- one of the most festive shows. We're finishing up women's freestyle here, still at 60. Yes, yeah, so... What do we got? Uh, and, we've... I mean, like seriously, other names that we haven't mentioned... Honest, uh, I actually did mention Anastasia Grigorieva earlier in a, in a conversation that didn't involve wrestling. Her and uh, Lada Skuyina were the first medalists from Latvia back in 2014. So they're in the field. Well, she's in the field. Luvov Ovcharova from the Russian Federation, junior world champ, world champion 2015, uh, 21 years old, a real threat to Kawhi here. Uh, and and Ma- uh, jo- Johanna Matson, junior world champ, Richard, 2005. She's been around forever, world bronze in 2010. So. Uh, there's definitely some depth. There's some experience, and this this is going to be a fun weight class to watch. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think. Can and I want to give Linda Murray a shout out just because I Canada Commonwealth Games champion. Because did you mention Malik? Andy Ross from India. To the show. Sakshi Malik, Olympic bronze medalist. Yeah, I should because she was right ahead of Kawhi on our list. <laughs> should probably mention her. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think that's a good. Good roundup of uh, of sixty kilos, you know. Look out for Kawhi, but Allie Reagan coming. She coming for it. One weight left for the twenty fourth of August. It's uh, sixty nine, sixty nine. So Olympic champ Sarah Dosho is the number one seed, but I don't believe. Oh, she is in there. Okay, so Dosho, she's in there. Sa- Sari Dosho is in there, as is. Nasan Boma Ochirbat, mm-hmm. three-time world bronze medalist, and then Olympic silver medalist Maria Mamashuk of Belarus. I like that name, Mamashuk. Such a cool name. I just like saying Belarus. <laughs> not like not, not like Belarus, but Belarus. Well, you're never- and quick quick story. Ask Jamie McNabb, who works in national teams at USA Wrestling. It's one of Richard's coworkers. I used to share a wall with her at USA Wrestling. Just walk into her office one day and ask. What's the deal with Belarus? And you will get a great story. Nobody else listening to the show will understand this story, but Richard, this is my knowledge bomb for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Continuing on at 69. And I was going to say, we have seeds. So um, this is uh, this is sort of how the seeds break down. So Dosho is the one, then Booz Tosun of Turkey, and Elmira Sidikova of Kazakhstan tied for the two seeds. So um i don't huh yeah how are they gonna figure that out yeah, well if this this one works well because they'll both just be separated on the bottom side of the bracket so it doesn't really oh that's right two three yeah, it doesn't really matter um yeah so that's that's how the seeding plays out the four seed was natalia vorobieva of russia who's not in here uh, it looks like russia is sending uh bratikova Brat- bratikova, bratikova. Yep, yep, yep so junior world champ 08 so Hey, this is the thing. You look at that, you're like, ah, oh, Junior World Champion 08. That was nine years ago. Ah, <laughs> so, well, let me tell you. Let me tell you who the star could be here from France, Kumba Larouk. Uh, Larac. Kumba Larac. If you smell. Yeah, sorry. She is. What the rock? Woo. Sorry, I just. Go. Are you good? Is cooking. Skip Juniors this year. She won. She won Asian Junior uh, Asians. <laughs> France is not in Asia. She won European Juniors. Was bronze at the seniors. And it's like okay, I'm not going to the Junior Worlds. I'm going to the Senior Worlds. 
Cadet World Silver 14, Cadet World Champ 15, Cadet World Cha- uh, Junior World Champ last year. 19 years old. Actually, her birthday is two days before she competes. So it's technically 18. She turns 19 during the competition. So yeah. this kid, she's good. One thing I question, though, I think she needs a little bit more on her leg attacks because she's got a really good slide by and a really good drag, really good show, really good, you know, Greco style of attack. So uh, I think for her for, on the senior level, really needs a go-to leg attack in this case. Just just my two cents for what little I know about technique. Yeah, I've seen her wrestle twice now. Saw her at Junior Worlds last year. I saw her at the Grand Prix of Paris uh, back in... Get Paris! Yes, she looks great. I mean, she... she. Uh... But am I, am, am I wrong? Am, I mean, am I wrong? Please tell me if I'm wrong, because I'm thinking... I mean... She, she's really good with her upper... Uh, uh, you know, her upper level attacks. She is. Just she has good body control, I think. is and But at this weight class, she doesn't necessarily need low-level attacks either. Correct. I mean, I granted, take the level of competition with a grain of salt. I can't recall who she was competing against uh, when I saw her in Paris. Obviously, at the Worlds, it's, it's top-notch. But in Paris, she cruised through that tournament. She looked fantastic. I mean, her offense was fine. Um, you know, I, I really think she could she could do something special here and and push for a medal. Um, but, you know, Dosho, we mentioned Dosho, but she's not necessarily a lock, you know, for Japan. She's she's uh, she's medaled quite a bit, right? But she hasn't been consistently winning the gold, right? Not dominant, not dominant, but consistent. Like, I mean, it, she's going to be in a medal situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's got a win or two over Adeline, I believe, in, in the past when Adeline was down at that weight class. So it's... The the question is, is the discipline there, is the Olympic gold going to go? I mean, she's 22 years old. That's a scary thing. She's finally broken through at 22. How many people could say that in their wrestling career? Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> freaky. I mean, like, LaRock's about to turn 19. We're like, oh, man, yeah, she's young. She's ready to come through. Dosho's not that much older than she is in terms of, like, the, there's – you know, a three-year gap mm-hmm. there. So. Yeah, does she turn the corner? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Um, but you know, let's let's talk about our American here, Tamira Mensa, who she is uh, like leather. She has not lost this year internationally. She is she won the Oregon, which is clearly one of the the toughest tournaments out there. Uh, I believe she won Spain. She uh, she's really picked up steam since she she made that uh, or she won the Olympic trials last year, and then she went through that. A qualification process where she was so close every time and that has sort of fueled her this season and she has just separated herself from the field domestically um you know and then yeah and to beat elena periskova for the right. spot and with with tamira i didn't really get to know her until the test event where the women's tournament went down in brazil kind of to basically go through the arena's which was, I believe it was in Carioca 1. We wrestled in Carioca 2. Now, nobody's doing anything in Carioca 1, 2, or 3. But uh, Tamira, her and I spent some time in the airport, and I got to know her a little bit. This girl is is, is an amazing story. You know, she's she's married. She's been married about a year. Uh, you know, wrestles at Wayland Baptist, which is the only college wrestling program, men or women, in the state of Texas. Originally out of, like, the Chicago area, uh, c- came to Texas and has been... This girl is honestly one of the sweetest people on the planet. And this is one thing where we want to talk about, and we kind of hinted at Julia being on fire on Twitter recently. This is one of these type of athletes that, let's take wrestling out of the situation for a minute and talk about how they are as people and how the wrestling community can get behind an athlete or somebody because of their personality, because of who they are as people. Tamira Mensa is one of those people that honestly is one of the most genuinely, beautifully nice people I've ever met in my life. I mean, I've met a lot of great people in wrestling. She's definitely up there. And and you want to root for her. Why? If you don't ever meet her, you want to root for her because she's just that cool and not cool, like, yeah, hanging out, we're seeing Carrie. Like, cool as, like, just, she's grounded. She's got everything you need in terms of, she, her head's on straight. She's a great athlete. 
she represents what's good about the sport of wrestling. So whether or not I, I, I don't have a rooting interest outside, you know, when the Americans wrestle, yes, I want the Americans to win. Whoever she's wrestling in the U.S., you know, I don't have a rooting interest in clubs or whether she's wrestling friends or not. She's a great human being, and that's what I want to tell the American wrestling public. This is a girl. This is a young woman. This is an athlete. You can say, hey, if you've got a daughter that, that's in wrestling, you want to be like this girl because she really does everything right, and it's just just a glowing personality. So this isn't anything about wrestling. It's just who she is, and I'm, I'm just, I just want – Richard, I'm telling this to you. Get her on freaking bonus points and let people hear – who Tamira Mensa really is. Have I not had her on? I thought I had her on. Did you? I could have sworn I, I think you might have actually. I think I had her on. Yeah. I'll have to go back and check that. But uh, well, I'm gonna have you figured out the playlist yet? <laughs> yes, I've got the playlist figured out. Um actually, you know what? While we keep it here, I'm gonna look it up because on matttalkonline.com you can find all the archives. So let's see. If I can spell her name right. Let's just search her last name because it's easier to spell than her first name. So if you go to MattTalkOnline.com slash, yep, bonus point 68. So February. Yeah. So MattTalkOnline.com slash BP68. You can get an insight on who Tamira Mensa is. It's not Tamara. Tamira, like, look in the mirror. That's how she said it to me. Boy, I hope she said that right. Anyway. <laughs> way off tangent with the Mensa story. Yeah, but she she's great. Um, yeah, and her podcast. If you listen to it for good people, man, yeah. that's the one thing that, you know, with the women in Greco, we've spent the last, well, one hour, if it's the women's show, two hours, if it's a combined show about who these people are, that's the best thing about international wrestling, man. You, you get to know them because you get the access greater, even uh, oddly enough at the senior level. So anyway, 69 finishing up. What are we, what are our thoughts? I think that's it. I think we've pretty much hit it. Uh, you know, a oh, cheer bat do show. I think, uh, you know what? Olivia DeBacco. Yeah. Canada. Yeah. She's tough. She's kind of, she's a Real little bit of the scene. Yeah. Real threat. Pan Am champ. Real threat. I mean, you got the, the Canadian women are like, you know, you talk about how good the Japanese women are. Well, the Canadians have in, in the U S have been like number two, number three, back and forth really since the foundations of women's wrestling. Now, the Ukraine and Russia and Mongolia and Azerbaijan, depending on who they paid on, to get on their team from Russia or Ukraine or whatever, they've been, you know, two, three, four, five. But uh, the Canadians have been consistent, even though that, that group of Carol Wynn, Verbeek, uh, you know, they've, they've since retired and they're now coaching. But, like, you can't overlook a Canadian woman in any world championship tournament either. Yeah, I agree. What was that year in Budapest? Stacey Anaka was like the number two in Canada. She was second in the world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, well, man, I think that uh, that about wraps it up for, for the women. Uh, you know, you got to like our U.S. team. Um, you know, the more you, the more I've looked at it, uh, I've I've had a sort of change of, of thought from, you know, oh, we're just we're, we're real young and there's a lot of turnover. It just seems because the names are different this year. There's no Elena. There's no Adline. You know you, the names are different, but we've got good veteran leadership from Helen and Allie and Vicky, and then you've got, you know, uh, Haley who has the uh, Olympic experience. And she's she's got the grittiness and the toughness under her belt. You know she can have a great showing. And then our our other uh, new members uh, on the team. I mean that. I think we've got a really good women's team. You know we we normally do, but but this year I'm. I'm optimistic that we can see some good success from young talent, but you're seeing a lot of great young talent come through uh, in the women's freestyle. I mean, all actually all, you know, uh, age levels, but, but the women have really developed a solid pop pipeline um, to where you're, where you're starting to see the dividends of the, the cadet teams and the junior teams pay off and they're making the senior teams now. So it's exciting to see, um, you know, so expect good things from the U S women. That's my final thoughts on the subject.
show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.